Good afternoon, Comrade subscribers. So, looking at the Electronica 407, a little portable TV again. Uh, so, what are we going to do this time? So, this is the um, this is the power supply that uh, basically runs it. And so, as you'll know from previous videos, the power supply basically sits in the back shell here and then produces 12 volts DC that plugs into the back of this fellow here. So, so this is obviously designed for two, 220 volts AC, um, Soviet. Uh, you know, we use 240 volts AC here in Australia. Uh, it's pretty, pretty simple. So we've got a pretty cool transformer here. So actually, I'm thinking of, I want to disassemble this because I want to recover the transformer. It's pretty cool. We've got a transformer here. We've actually got a Western uh, bridge rectifier part here. Um, AEG, so that's, that was like that. So you can't really tell, obviously, that it's a Western part. But yeah, we've got an actual Western part here rather than four discrete diodes. Uh, smoothing capacitor up there. Um not sure what this capacitor is. I don't know if it's my, my X2 class, I don't know. Um, fuse here, transistor here, and I assume that this is the part that um, after the rectification uh, generates the, um, well, the stabilization, 12 volts regulator basically. So it regulates it down to 12 volts DC because then we've got the output there. Um, but I don't really want to I don't want to use this for a couple of reasons. I don't have I don't have the fuse holder that goes in there. I don't have a five pin plug for that. Um, so that makes it a bit difficult to use there. Uh, and also, yeah, it's an interesting scorch mark on this uh, resistor here across the. Um, across the switch, I guess the inputs. So what I want to do is basically just recover just recover this um, plug, DC plug from here and then um, hook it up on the back here somehow with a um, 2.1 mil DC socket and then I can just plug in a um, plug in DC to that. And this will internally go through and provide DC uh, 12 volts to the thing. That's the plan. So, like I said, I'd yeah, I'll um, recover, reco definitely recover the transformer. Um, and I'll probably keep this section bit here, this bit here as well, that generates the 12 volts. Uh, because it actually does look like there's a bypass. I think the reason why we've got this type of of pl plug on the back is though that you could either plug it into the main supply, or so that you could plug it into um, cigarette lighter in the car. So you could you know use this in your uh, in your larder <laughs> or your um, other whatever other cars they had. Um, yeah. So you'd have your 12 volts in, and that would obviously bypass the regulation, I guess. So that's my plan. So the first thing to do will be to just get this cable off and then figure out where I want to... So that's the on-off switch up there. Don't really need that anymore. I won't need it anymore because I won't have the um so, so I could probably recover this so I've got this frame in the back where the switch is so I'd have the on off switch see these are all too big just for a yeah all right maybe I'll dismantle this as well because I will need this if I want to reuse the on-off switch. Okay. Rightio, it's done. So here's the frame that I'll keep. Uh, da, 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 with the on-off switch. 
is the transformer that I've recovered. I'm not going to use it for anything, but it's just neat. <laughs> I think it's cool because it's um, power supply is actually dated, I don't know, I think October 1979. I think it's October 79. So what's that? <laughs> Over 40 years old. I think it's neat. So I'll keep that. Um, don't really need this. I've got plenty of uh, bridge rectifiers. I don't need one that's over 40 years old. Um, this, I assume, is the um, 12 volt stabilizer, as they call it in Russian, or um, regulation stage. So keep that. And um, smoothing capacitor. Is that 4700 microfarads, 20, 25 volts? Uh, looks like a 1979 as well. So they're the main parts. And yes, yeah, so here is the here is the resistor that had the interesting scorch mark on it. I don't know if we can read the value. So I don't know, is it half watt or something? Doesn't matter. Doesn't really matter. So I'll keep those in my little Soviet parts bin. And then some interesting little bits and pieces in here, like battery cells and these, which have probably got some sort of well these are um these ones are quite heavy actually, these capacitors. So um, anyway, put my little parts bin here. Right, there's that. This was across. So I don't know if this is some sort of um, if this resistor, uh, if this capacitor, this capacitor was across. I think the outputs. It doesn't really matter anyway. Let me clear all this up and we'll see how we can somehow modernize this a little bit or simplify it, I should say. Keep that and oh, keep that and that. Yeah, all right. So I'll probably use this here, and so that's how it look. There goes the cookers. So, where should I draw a hole for this? You know, this it would be nice if I had something this huge, but um, I'll try and minimise. I want to draw right in the middle of that. Um, <clears throat> although I wonder if I could mount it on this perhaps, which is probably a bit strange, snip these off and then just drill a hole and then just mount it on here. Maybe not. Yeah. Not really sure what to do. Okay. I'm thinking probably up there would be idea would be the probably the best part because that way I don't have to drill through the metal bracket as well. So if I stick it in there, that's kind of out of the way. So it should be okay there. And then wire it up to the plug there. That one and that one. This one, 
and I checked on the continuity. So when it's when it's off, the second one's always open, not always closed. So I guess for charging, if there was a battery or something, maybe. And then when you turn it on, then these and these close, and that one opens. So I'll drill a hole up there for whatever size this is, and then push it in. Actually, no, I'll solder it up first, then push it in, and then one goes into here. Yeah, okay. All right, let me get this done. I'm getting this, so we've got the internal part done. So I just need to drill the hole, feed this through, and wire it up to the switch. And um, that's it, I hope, I think. So that's... Um, so the only only problem will be that uh, it won't be easy to pull this out again um, because of this on that side there. Um, but you will be able to take the back shell off because you just simply disconnect it from the back of the TV there. So that uh, that works out well. So yeah, that I just need to figure out what size drill bit to do. Okay, guess I measure. Measure that side. Okay. okay, it is done. Bit of an amateur job, but I'm doing this for fun. Certainly not profit. So there we've got that there. Hopefully this is long enough so I can just solder this onto here, or around actually, and um, actually I want it to go through there, that, won't I? So I'll solder it on, screw it up and tidy it up, and let's see. Of course I went and put it through the wrong bloody hole, didn't I? <laughs> or did I? Maybe I planned to do it that way, to keep the cable out of the way, perhaps. Want something done right, don't get me to do it. So... I can recover like that <laughs> and then just tidy up this cable here, screw that back on and then hopefully I'll be um, good to give it a try because I want to try it with something which you'll see in a minute maybe. Okay let me find the screws. Right, there we go, what do you reckon? I just came out of the factory in Soviet Union. <laughs> um, sorry, best I can do. So I know there will be those that dislike it because I've removed the original power supply. Get over it. At least this way it's still quite usable in the modern era. At least it's usable. That's the point. Planning to use it. <laughs> Um, so I should, yeah, so I'll, I'll do this back up, I'll do those, both those sides back up, I think they're the only two I, maybe, okay, there's maybe three screws, yep, yeah, so those two, and that one down there, and put this one back in, and antenna socket, which is what I'll be needing. And um, let's see. Two sides are done up. Let's slide the antenna socket back in. It's shaped somehow. Shaped like that. No, no, it's shaped like that. Ah, it goes in like that. Like so. Okay. Power back onto here. Like 
like so. <laughs> Fungal. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, of course, man. I wonder why there's just a big gap there where I've put my socket because that's where the bloody tube goes. End of the tube. Right where I've got my socket. Uh, what, a, what an amateur. Where else can I put it? So I might have to move it over here. All right. Bugger. Yeah. Oh, well, so, so, so this is why I do it so you don't have to... You don't have to make the same mistakes. That was a, such a good position. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to have to use it like this for now, and I'll sort out the plug later. I'll sort out the socket later. So what I want to do, first of all, let's see if it will power on. So this should be... I've made it so it's center positive. I just want to double check it's center positive. 12, 12 volts. Um, let's just do continuity. So that should be, yep. Yeah. All right, so that should be all right. So if I turn that on. Switch to DC. Yep, 12 volts. Okay. All right. Power that off. Switches off. Did I even use the right bloody plug? Oh. Bloody talk about amateur hour here. Might be a 2.5 mil. Maybe amateur hour, right? <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. What size is that? Oh, I think this might be. <sighs> All right, there we go. All right, so yeah, I always meant it to be 2.5 mil. And if anyone tells you any different, Talon porky pies. So <laughs> there we go. Just added the 2.5 mil in. Um, plug her in. Power on. Power on. Drawing current. Making a little bit of noise. I can hear a high pitch squeal, high pitch whine. And it's on. Okay. Now yeah, let's uh, let's get the uh, let's get the guest. Ah, I've got the Icar sixty four, Icarus. Uh, it's a very dodgy connection. So this cable's in okay, but this end uh, is kind of popped out, so it doesn't isn't really fitting. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit, a bit flaky. So what do I have it on? Down button is M, MV and, oh no, down button is DMV. I don't know what DMV is. And up button is MV. Medium, medium wave, I don't know. All right, so, and then we've got these other switch here, which you can go between channels one to five and six, to, well, not channels one to five, but one to five, six to 12, okay. Oh, okay, right, so we've got one to five, six to 12. Oh, okay, so DMV must be like UHF or something, 21 to 41. Oh, low low power. So hopefully you got all that. So we've got DMV, 
which is channels 21 to 41, and then our MV, we've got 1 to 5, and then we can press a button and we can do 6 to 12. So um, if we want to look at MV, so MV button is up, channels 1 to 5, power is on. You can hear a beep. Oh, <laughs> so let's see. We can that's channel one, two. Big jump down to three. Four. I think I missed it. So yeah, I'm not expecting a very good picture because the cable is not really got a solid. All right, so let's try six to twelve. Oh, that's not clearer, isn't it? All right, six to twelve. Sorry about the rolling shutter. Oh, oh, I can see oh, I can see something. There we go. Okay, got some garbage. <laughs> it's a little I'm I'm a bit and I could probably <laughs> probably uh adjust this a little bit. But again, like the cable connection isn't very it's very dodgy in its uh, if I hold it. <laughs> ah, yeah, the cable connection, antenna connection is not very. Let's reset the computer again. I definitely had it. Yeah. Definitely there. Just need to fine tune it. I don't know if there is a of course it's what a forty year old Soviet built T V as well, so it's definitely yeah that's almost never gone past ah, that's probably the best ah, it's definitely there around channel must be Oh no, so it's M, yeah, so channel 11. I think this is mainly, so I think it's mainly this very dodgy connection I've got. Ah, if I don't move. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's very, I could probably maybe rewire this. Stop moving it around, Brent. It's not helping. Anyway, so yes, it's definitely, definitely about channel 11 by the looks of it. Ah, I've lost it again. Yeah, anyway, so I just, because this has got a, a working Ccam output, I wanted to try it. It's just a shame that I screwed up the bloody power thing. I have to redo that. So I don't know if there's anything else I can do. So I don't want to fiddle around too much because it's obviously on and I don't have the case closed. So I don't want to, because there is an adjustment pot there. 
And I believe underneath there are also there's another three adjustments I can do. So yeah, it's definitely definitely there. Let me retry. Let me change the frequency on this. this is 25 hertz at the moment. Let me change the frequency of the video. Changing the frequency doesn't really help. But yeah, you can see that we're still getting that garbled text there. So yes, there's still work I need to do. If I turn it this way, still work I need to do on the ICAR itself. Yeah, you can see it. You can see the welcome ICAR 64 text there. But yeah, it's still a bit. And then we get that. So if we go and reset it again. Oh yeah, you can see that we had the black screen, so. Oh, oh, it's working. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, so <laughs> it's actually working at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry about the, yeah. You can see the flashing cursor. Okay, so that's probably the best, that's probably the right frequency to tune it into. We press reset again, and then we get the welcome screen that's a bit garbled. Actually, it seems to be okay. So if I, okay, this is <laughs> reset again. So if I press enter, okay, so if I press enter, we, it kind of doesn't do anything. Let's press reset and reset again. And then if I press any other key, and it's working. We got the flashing cursor there. 10. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, okay. That was kind of what I wanted to just test. So it is kind of working, but I need to figure out... I need to figure out the cable. Ah, bloody hell, it's just... The centre thing's come out, so I jammed it in there. So that's probably not helping. Um, awesome. No, that doesn't fit. All right. I've been throwing away bloody these cables because I had no use for them. Now I've got a use for them. All right, so that fits in perfectly there. But this... I need the similar for there. Although that doesn't fit in perfectly there. So that doesn't fit in either. That That's forcing it. Anyway, not your problem. That's kind of what I wanted to do. So yeah, I've converted it to 12 volts DC, but I've got to, I've got to remove the socket again. And um, it kind of does work. <laughs> Let's see. Bye for now.